just lift up your hand before heaven begin to worship the most high God just worship him bless the name of the Lord adore him adore him this morning we are in his presence let us lift up our voice and glorify the name of the Lord thank you Lord oh thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you for your faithfulness thank you for your mercy thank you for your love Lord we lift up our voice this morning and we give thanks unto you and we give thanks unto you hallelujah we give thanks unto you hallelujah our God is good and his mercies endures forever our God is good and his mercies endures forever our God is good and his mercies endures forever our God is good and his mercies endures forever our God is good our God is faithful our God is awesome lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord this morning thank him that you are alive today thank him that you are seeing the end of this month thank him that you are seeing the end of this year thank him thank him thank him thank him that you are on your feet this morning and give thanks unto the lord appreciate him appreciate him acknowledge him give him the glory and the honor and the power that only him deserve all glory all honor all power belongs to our god and heavenly father we appreciate you we thank you as a ministry we thank you as a family we thank you lord for in you we are secured in you we are secured in you we have life in you we are protected in you we have confidence in you we boast in you we move forward in you we are victorious in you we conquer somebody shout hallelujah this morning somebody shout hallelujah this morning in him you are a winner in him you will have divine health in him you will have peace in him your joy is completed Oh, the glory of the Lord is coming upon you. The glory of the Lord is coming upon you. May you walk in the glory. May you live in the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I am blessed in him. Say, I am fulfilled in him. I am made complete in him. If you believe that, shout a big amen. amen. One more time. Amen. One more time. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to this wonderful spirit filled, scripture filled, word based service this morning. Hallelujah. Those in the micro church those online a very special welcome to each and every one of you we are gonna have a great time together today no you can say that to somebody you are going to have a great time today go ahead tell somebody that you are going to have a great time today <clears throat> you are going to have a great time today a great time. Glorious time. Glorious time. For you today. For you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
winners get excited towards the end. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The losers drop their face, but the winners, they stand strong. <laughs> I said to you, you are a winner. You are a winner. You are a winner. Even before the end of this year, you will win. I am the winner in the Lord Jesus. I say to you, I am the winner, 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 winner. <laughs> I am the winner in the Lord Jesus. Let me ask you, are you a winner? Come on! Are you a winner? Winner in the Lord. Are you a winner? Winner in the Lord. Are you a winner? Are you a winner? Winner in the Lord. Are you a winner? Winner in the Lord. Are you a winner? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Praise the Lord. It looks like only those left and right are winners. It looks like those that are looking at me, they are not winning. Okay, leave your chair again. Leave your chair again and stand where you can dance. Praise the Lord. If you will not celebrate God, Ah, you will not be celebrated, though. If I were you, make room. Praise the Lord. Hold on. And all of them are looking at me. They are not moving. Ushers, flush them away from their chairs now. Push them away from their chairs. Thank you. Push them away from their chairs. Praise the Lord. If you don't want to celebrate God because of you, celebrate God because of me. Praise the Lord. Because this God has been so good to me. So please, please, if you don't have a reason to celebrate because of me, just because of me, help me celebrate God. Praise the Lord. Are you a winner? Winner, winner, winner.
shout hallelujah. May you have a new song. May you have a new dance. Before the end of this year, you will dance like never before. You will sing like never before. You will celebrate like never before. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' precious name. So shall it be. So shall it be. Praise the Lord. Please take your seats. <laughs> that is a good one. Beautiful one. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for the people that responded to see that I have the microphone I'm using this morning. <clears throat> And my prayer for them, not only for them, but even for those that it was in their heart, but it was not in their hand. I pray for you all. As you responded, once the servant of God commanded, may it be like that with you this year. Yeah. That for once you will cry unto the Lord, whatever that need will be I speak specifically to the end of this year whatever you are believing God for whatever you will raise your voice for God may he hear you yes. may he grant you your requests yes. nobody will see your tears yes. but they will hear your celebration yes. Lord, I'm asking you, as your people have obeyed and responded, let heaven respond to all their needs. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir. Yeah. Holy Father, I thank you because you answered the prayers of your servants. And even this day you have answered. And give me the privilege to hear their testimonies. Yeah. Before the end of the year. Amen. Before the end of the year. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I am deeply, deeply, deeply thankful. And so if I over preach today, don't blame me. Yes, I am very comfortable today. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So if I over preach, bear with me. Over time, it will adjust. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And because this is also new, I want to hear from those that are connected online or in the micro church or wherever you are to confirm to me that you are hearing clearly because they just worked on this to install it this morning. So if PDA or John or Deaconess Marion any of them can confirm that because what we hear in the house and what we hear online can be different. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So please just send me a message to confirm that you are hearing clearly. And that is important. That is important. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God is a good God. We started with Living Hope last Sunday. Living Hope. Okay, I've gotten a message that we are hearing clearly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> we started a message last Sunday about Living Hope. Why? very simple remember what we said that poverty is the conspiracy of hopelessness and helplessness 
to produce shame and humiliation. Poverty is not lack of money in your pocket. No. That is what many people look at and so they don't solve the problem. As long as you look at poverty as the presence and or absence of money in your pocket, you will not change your situation. Life is spiritual. And therefore, poverty is spiritual. Prosperity is spiritual. Amen? Amen. And then I said to you, if you look at the division of poverty, the conspiracy of hopelessness and helplessness, they are coming together to bring shame and disgrace into the life of somebody. Then you will understand that no Christian, no Christian is supposed to be poor. Or no Christian should be poor. I know that <clears throat> I know that we have anointing service, anointing for breakthrough, anointing for prosperity, anointing for this, anointing of that. But there are fundamentals that makes that anointing to work. And if there are fundamental is out of place in your life, no matter how much they anoint you, it will not work. So, if the foundation is not right, there is nothing you can build on it. And so, it is your responsibility to build a foundation. I remember I spoke to my father in the Lord some time ago and I said to him, Daddy, please, I want to have a program and I said I want to bring so 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 person into the program. And Daddy told me, he said, son, nobody built foundation for somebody else. He said, this is not the time for that program. Continue with the foundation work. At the right time, he will come. Praise the Lord. And that is, that is very instructive. He said to me, nobody will build the foundation. Likewise, nobody will build the foundation of your life for you. You are the architect that have to design your foundation. Your foundation. And your foundation determines your building. Or in this case, your foundation determines either hope or hopelessness. Your foundation will determine either help or helplessness. Praise the Lord. But unfortunately, many people have not been taught on how to build their foundation. The Bible says to us in uh, Hebrews 11, 1, by faith, or so he said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The problem is that many people are calling upon faith, 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 faith. But they don't talk about hope, 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 hope. And yet, there are situations that makes you lose hope. <clears throat> there are circumstances that makes you lose hope. You can find yourself in a situation that makes you lose hope. You can find yourself in a circumstances that makes you give up. Like for instance, like for instance, some people can get into a bad marriage. Bad marriage. Christians. Good believing Christians. I'm talking about people that are faithful with God. They believe God. They trust God. But they find themselves in a bad marriage. And they are asking, what do I do now? What do I do now? Praise the Lord. But there are people, they were not Christians. And then they got into a bad marriage. I'm using the case of bad marriage because that is close to hell as you can be on earth. A 
a bad marriage is terrible. Praise the Lord. Those of you that were in Agege, you watched the movie, Eternity So Near. You saw what the woman went through because of bad marriage. Right? Those of you that watched that movie, you saw what the woman went through. Now, many people, when they come into that situation, they lose hope. And they become helpless. But that is not what it's supposed to be. Praise the Lord. There is no hopeless situation for a believer. There is no helpless situation for a believer. You may have made the mistake and ended up in a bad marriage. But there is hope and there is help. Praise the Lord. I want to show you one of the scriptures that can work wonders for you. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Praise the Lord. I said to you, we have been called unto a living, a living hope. And Jesus is our living hope. Praise the Lord. And because Jesus lives, we will forever live. Praise the Lord. In 1 Peter chapter 1, going back from 3 all the way to verse 9. It talks about the hope that we have been called unto. We have not been called to hopelessness, but we have been called to hope and hopefulness. Amen. Now, I say to you, no situation is helpless or hopeless for the believer. What you need is an education on how to overcome it. That's what you need. That's what you need. In Hebrews 11, verse 3, I want you to follow the word of God clearly. Clearly. Amen. It says, By faith, we understand. We. Who is we here? Say me. And if you don't have a Bible, look at the projector. It's there. But you need to understand that education, education, spiritual education, is one way to end poverty in your life. Spiritual education. You can go to university, you can come out with a degree or degrees, and yet you remain poor. Because degree does not command prosperity. I met a man once, he had six degrees. But he has never had a, a good job. More than six months. He has never had a job. And he was helpless. And so he came to see me. I said, when you are coming, bring all your degrees. He said, yes, pastor. I wanted to be sure. And when he was coming, he came with six of them or even seven. And he did very well. Very well. And I asked him, what is the problem? He said, he doesn't know. He gets a job. Less than six months. They will fire him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Degree does not make anybody rich. It can give you recognition. But it cannot make you rich. You know why? Poverty and prosperity, they are both spiritual. And unless you become spiritual, you cannot overcome it. Amen. Amen. There was another guy, so intelligent. I remember him very well. This guy, he has, he has uh, mathematics and engineering is his field. He was so good in his place of work, so intelligent, that when they were looking for people to do a brand new course called mechatronics, this course was just introduced not so long ago. Not so long ago. It's, it's a course that combines mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. So it's called mechatronics, sorry, electronics engineering. And this guy is an African from Cameroon. He told me by himself, he said, Pastor, do you know I've been chosen in my place of work. I'm one of the very few chosen to attend this course for free. Mechatronics. And I looked at him. He was in poverty. In poverty. And 
I tried to help him. He couldn't be helped because he was lawless. But the other one with six, seven degrees, when I met with him and I realized that the problem was spiritual, as I prayed for him, dealt with that demon, and I said to him, go and apply again. And when he applied, he got a very good job in another city outside Munich. He came to me and said, Sir, I've gotten this job. Should I go? Should I stay? That is what a change means. Before, he would have gone by himself. But this time around, he is asking, Should I go? Should I stay? And then I spoke to the wife. The wife said, Daddy, please. This is one of the best jobs that has come to him. If you will allow us to go. I said, okay. But make sure you find a living church as you go. And the wife said, Pastor, I will do that. And they moved. And he was in that job. And, you know, there was not a report of him losing it. Praise the Lord. You know why? Because the problem has been dealt with spiritually. But the other guy that was so intelligent that was sent to do mechatronics. He did the mechatronics. But he was still poor. Very poor. He was finding it difficult to pay his rent. So he tells you, by strength shall no man prevail. So whatever situation you find yourself, for a Christian, it's not hopeless. For a Christian, it's not helpless. Listen, he says, by faith, we understand. We understand that the worlds were framed by, not degrees, not qualifications, not your connections, praise the Lord, not by your traditions. I want you to read this with me together. Who put this in here now? Read with me. Say, by faith, I understand that the world we are framed by the word of God. What does that mean? There are people that have been in the world of sickness for five years. Affliction. Affliction. Pain. Hospital in and out. Praise the Lord. There are people that have been in the world of sickness. There are people that have been in the world of poverty for years. For years. Praise the Lord. Please, everybody stand on your feet. Make the job easier for the ushers. Everybody stand. Thank you. Thank you. Then my ushers can also concentrate because they are busy working to wake you up. Amen. Amen. There is one good thing about heat. <laughs> is it not true? You'll be awake because you'll be sweating it out. Show we off all the air conditioners. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say by faith. By faith. We, understand we understand that the words were framed, we framed by the word of God. The word of God. So now, so now by, faith, by faith, I know, I know that my word can, can only be framed by the word of God. Walk around and meditate on this for 30 seconds. Walk around, leave your chair. I want to see all chairs empty. Thank you. My word, my word, my word will be framed by the word of God. My word, word of divine health, will be framed not by vitamins, not by medication, but by the word of God. Long life is framed by the word of God. I will live long. This is God's will. This is God's plan for my life. Every part of my destiny will be framed by the word of God. By the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I refuse poverty. 
I reject poverty. I refuse sickness and diseases. These things, they are not from God. And therefore, I am in Christ. I cannot have it. Every good thing, every perfect thing comes from God. And therefore, if it's not good, if it's not perfect, may I not have it. May I not have it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And now, whatsoever that is in me, that is around me, that is not good, nor perfect, right now, I command you to leave my body. I command you to go. I command you to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Only what is good, only what is perfect, will exist or permitted in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, to the glory of God. I believe it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Come back to your seat now. And take a seat. That was a good prayer meeting. If you will pray like that every day, believe me, you are made. Believe me, you are made. If you can consistently pray like that, and thank God this is on YouTube, so you can go back to it. Make it your statement of faith. So, every situation, every circumstances, if it doesn't favor you, you have the power to turn it around. You have the authority to turn it around. You are complaining, we not change it. You are mourning, we not change it. Amen. Amen. One thing that changes situation is the application of the word into a situation. The application of the word. Somebody can help you by praying for you, yes. Somebody can give you speed by laying hand on you, yes. But nobody will substitute your situation. You are the one in it. The Bible said, if any two shall agree. Amen? So, I can have an agreement with you. That your situation will change. That is according to the word of God. But, if you have no hope, faith will not work. Praise the Lord. There are two things that brings anybody down into poverty. Two things. We have talked about hopelessness and helplessness. But there is another one. And this one, you use it anyhow, any day. And you don't know that it carries so much power. What is that one? Your tongue. Your tongue. Praise the Lord. Your tongue is a sword. Your tongue is a sword. It is destructive. You will have whatever you say. Amen. Amen. Mark 11. Mark 11. Jesus began by saying, Have faith in God. Verse 22. Praise the Lord. Mark 11. I want us to open there. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Praise the Lord. Have faith in God. But that is not the end. Jesus said to us, the foundation, the foundation of a powerful life is built upon faith. Built upon faith. Through hope. Amen. And so when Jesus said, have faith in God. But there was something he said in verse 23. 
want us to look at verse 23. For assuredly I say to you, who is Jesus talking to here? For assuredly I say to you, who is Jesus talking to here? Put yourself. You say, Jesus is talking to me. Now, what is he saying to you? Read it. What is he saying to you? Did you read it to yourself? How did you read it? I said to you, whoever says, is that what you read? What did you read? If I say to this mountain, is that what you read? Because he's talking to you and I. Praise the Lord. Jesus says, if you, if I, will say to this mountain, what is the mountain? What is the mountain? The mountain is the circumstances and situations that are contrary to your expectations. Who are thou, O mountain, before the river bear? The prophet declared. But you are a prophet of your own destiny. Who are thou, O poverty, before me? By this time next year, you will be history in my destiny. By this time next year, there will be an end to poverty. I will not only be in surplus, but I will be a distributor. Yeah. That is the way people that are going to make it talk. I just prayed for you. I said, this microphone, I only said last Sunday, I need a microphone. Praise the Lord. And then people responded to see that I got the microphone. Praise the Lord. And I have it. I was telling my son man yesterday, I said, have you said the microphone? He said, ah, that I don't know you have even gotten it. Because the answer was so speedily. But here, here, the pastor prays, not only for those that have made it to happen, but for those that will to do it, but it was not in their hand. I said, Lord, as you visit those that did it, remember those in whose heart it was to do it. Now, so, to say the reason why I didn't do it is because I don't have money. That is not, no longer an issue. The prayer is for those that will to do it. The question is that, did you wait to do it and you didn't have the resources? I remember we had a program in the hotel, four star hotel one time. And then we had a guest speaker. And the guest speaker said, who is here that wants to pay the bills for this program in this hotel we are using? And then nobody stood up. And then the guest speaker said, who is it in his heart? If it is in your heart to do it, but you don't have the resources, come out. And I think three people came out. Three people. Why is this important? Listen, you are being trained here to walk in victory. So when three people came out, the guest minister prayed for them and laid hand on them. And three of them, I watched them. I watched them. Their life was never the same again. Everything changed in their life. Three of them. Amen. And God blessed them. And God blessed them. And God blessed them. Not that they did it, but it was in their heart to do it. Are you hearing me? Remember, God looks at our heart, not at our wallet. When we talk about hope, 
when we talk about faith we need to understand these things proceed from the heart it's nothing external no faith and hope as they are internal but they produce external results what did the bible say they have in hebrews 11 3 he said so that the things that we see are not made of things that are visible praise the lord so faith gives substance but you can't see faith but you can see faith amen you can't see faith but you can see faith the bible said jesus seeing their faith in mark chapter 3 he saw their faith how do you see the faith of somebody the guy that was crippled in Acts chapter 3 Peter saw his faith faith is an act and so by your act we can see your faith do you get it now faith is an act and so by your act it's not enough for you to say God knows I don't have. If I have, I would have given. No! It's not enough. You go to God and say, Lord, I will to do this. I want to do this. The silver and gold belongs to God. You say, Lord, put it in my hand as it is in my heart. Are you hearing me? It is very easy to change your situation. It's very easy. Many years ago, we were clearing a container. And the cost of clearing, we didn't have the complete money. What we have was only part of the money. And we struck, people were owing us left and right. We tried to get the money. We couldn't get the money. We couldn't get the money. Praise the Lord. We tried and run around, run around, run around. And I said to mommy, say, you know what? You know what? Let's give what we have as a seed. It's not enough to clear the container. So what's the point of having it and running around? I said, let's give it. Let's give it out. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. We just read from the devotional that Christians live in a bubble. You may not know what a bubble is. A bubble is like a cage. But this is a beautiful cage. Amen? Amen. And that bubble is called Christ. And so we are all in it, in Christ. That's what it means to be in Christ. You, uh, you, you, you see, this is my Bible, right? Let's say this is a bubble. Amen? Amen. And so you put this inside it. And then you close it. That's what it means that we live in the bubble. And so Jesus is like the Bible. He is the word of God anyway. We enter into him. We are covered like this. Now, in John chapter 10, Jesus said, Anyone that goes into me will also come out and we have pasture. He says, when you come into me, you will have you will have flexibility. You will have liberty. You will have dominion. And above all, he said, you will have pasture. Because there is no famine in this bubble. There is no scarcity in this bubble. And that is why you can live in Nigeria and live in the bubble at the same time. Hello? Are you following me? You cannot live in Germany and live in the bubble at the same time. You can't live in two worlds at the same time. We live in Zion, but we operate in the world. You can't check into a hotel and make it your house now. Praise the Lord. And so for a Christian, the world is like a big hotel. There will be a checkout time for us one day. You will check out. Amen. Amen. When your time runs out, when your money runs out, you will check out from earth. Remember what I said on Friday in Agege Pensley Man. 
I said to you, mistakenly we keep saying rapture will come, rapture will come, rapture will come. Listen to me. We have been misled in that thinking. You know? And so uh, somebody said to you, live your life so that if Jesus comes tomorrow, there is rapture, there is departure. Who will meet rapture? I don't know. But everybody will come to departure. As of this departure, you don't know the date. But you can feel the time approaching. Praise the Lord. Either you depart or you rapture. But rapture, we don't know the time. We don't know the season. But departure, God said in Genesis chapter 6, He said the maximum time of man shall be 120. Maximum. And you are my witnesses. Many don't even get the, the hundred. Amen? Amen? And so, when you are 65, 70, 80, to the glory of God, when you are there, you should be packing your bag for departure. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. You should buy a ticket for that. It's a one-way journey. Amen? Amen? It's a one-way journey. We have been taught that rapture, 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 rapture. Oh yes, rapture. But consider your departure. Tell yourself one day, one day, I will travel. It's a journey I cannot avoid. And therefore, I must prepare for it. That is the truth we should live with you. And so when you are quite fighting with your neighbor, think about departure. When you say, uh, whatever will happen, will happen. Uh, you, people say, they would rather die than lose it. You are careless. You are careless. Because when you say you would rather die, if you die, where will you go to? Have you bought your ticket? Do you know where you will go? There are things that will actually make you say, I can't do this. I can't do I'm not ready yet for this journey. Lord, give me more time to prepare myself. Praise the Lord. Jacob said, Gather unto me the sons of Jacob. My time is at hand. Gather them that I may bless them. Amen. Amen. Paul said to Timothy, say, I am being poured out like a drink offering. He said, My departure is at hand. Why don't we speak like that? Why don't you say, Lord, let me have a moment of glory on earth to bless people. Let me have a time of joy to make a difference. Lord, let me have a legacy that I touch many lives. Because at the end of the day, house will not remember you. Cars will not remember you. No, they will not remember you. What will remember you? Those who wipe their tears. Those who pay their school fees. Those are the things. Those that you fed. I was talking to Sister Mercy yesterday. And I said to Mercy, what you do? Because she's the one in charge of Jesus' kitchen. And I said to her, what you do is very important. I said, don't play with it. I said, it's a big ministry. I said, five years from now, a woman will come to you and say, the food you gave me, kept me alive that night. And today, I'm not lacking food. But I'm supporting those that are hungry. Because you fed me that day. And that's the revelation people are missing in Jesus' kitchen. When you buy a bag of rice, you are feeding the hungry. When you buy a oil, you are feeding the hungry. One day, one day, when the enemy will come to you with hunger, God will say, no, no, this one is erased from it. This one is disqualified from being hungry. He said, because I am the one that feed this one. Because this one feed my people. And so I have taken it by responsibility, not only to feed him, but to feed his children. He said, devil, you cannot touch this one. Are you hearing me? Yes, Living hope comes from righteous acts. Living hope comes from what? Righteous acts. When you do good, I said to young people, I said to young people, you can make a deal with God. I don't know if they had me last Sunday, but I will say it again today. 
You are looking for a way to make it. You are looking for a way to get money. Have you tried to do business with God? Have you tried? Say to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to make a deal with you. I'm going to bring 20 souls. Was it 20 or 25 souls I saw last Sunday? Sorry? 20 souls. And for each soul, how much? Aha, now you remember. Lord, I need one million. I'm going to do business with you, Lord. I will bring 20 souls to you. Lord, give me one million. Each soul, 50,000. Amen. That is revelation from the Spirit. You monetize your evangelism with God, not with men. And so, you may want to go for evangelism and you don't have money to transport. You know what you do? You start trekking. You don't even want to beg anybody for money to go and tell them, you know, if I have, I won't beg you. I'm going for evangelism. You know, this is God's work I'm doing. Support me. That is already a mess. Praise the Lord. When you don't have transport, when you come back, there are souls already in front of your house. Walk. Lord, 20 souls for 1 million. And I said to you, when you have won the 20 souls and you don't see the 1 million, you go and start planning the business you want to do. And somebody said, do you have the money? He said, no, but God is owing me. God is owing you. How can God owe you? He said, because I made a deal with God and I fulfilled my part. He will fulfill his part. Because I have come to know him. I have come to trust him. I know what God is able to do. He said that those that put their trust in him will never be put to shame. And so I have done a deal with the Almighty. And you come here and you testify. Church, I made deal with God. I told him 20 souls for 1 million. I have bought my 20 souls. They are in church. Church, I'm going to share another testimony of how God paid me back very soon. Praise the Lord. What you do, you have opened God to shame if he fails to perform. And God wouldn't take shame from anybody. No, he, would, he, he wouldn't take any shame from anybody. No, no, no. And you have stood up here and worldwide. And people heard you said, I have done my part. 20 souls, pa, 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 they are in church. And I have gone to negotiate the business. I'm waiting for God to come true. He must come true for me. Faith, hope comes from righteous acts. Righteous deed. Amen. And the more you do with God, the more your faith increases. The more your hope increases. What did he say in, in Matthew chapter 6? He said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be your heart is connected to your treasure so if you have treasures in heaven you will have faith in heaven you will have hope in heaven praise the lord Amen. do you know about it what god said in jeremiah chapter 29 have we finished with this scripture okay let's let's not go to jeremiah let's stay with matthew first matthew would not complain jeremiah wait for I should I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not that in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you don't doubt, if you believe, and so you may be in a bad marriage, and you say this marriage, you cannot be bad. I have come to heal you. Jesus is the balm of Gilead. He said, my marriage will be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I command everything to begin to walk. Walk well, walk right in my marriage. Satan, you cannot destroy this marriage anymore. I come against you by the blood. I declare that God's love, God's joy, all those things, I release them into this marriage. Your husband may be unreasonable. Your wife may be unreasonable. Take them up as a prayer point. What do you do? You invest prayer in them. You invest prayer in them. Stop complaining. The biggest hindrance, the biggest hindrance to the 
prayer of faith is complaining and murmuring. You can't murmur and complain and pray at the same time. It will not work. And that is what is affecting many people. They pray quite all right, but they fear also. What did Job say? Job said, the things I fear. <laughs> look, 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 look. Praise the Lord. Job, 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 Job. No, some people don't like it. Just to hear about Job, they don't like it. Praise the Lord. Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3, verse 25. Job chapter 3. We are still coming back. We are still coming back to Marco. Praise the Lord. We are still coming back to Mark. And we are still going to Jeremiah. And I told you, if I over preach today, forgive me. Alright? I have a new toy. Let me use it well. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I have a new toy. Let me use it. Don't you like it? So free. Alright. Job chapter 3 verse 25. What does he say? <laughs> No, 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 no. Everybody in the church, look at the projector. Everybody in the church. Everybody. I want you to read this. <coughs> Again, everybody. For the thing I greatly feared. I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded, ah! Job was a good man. Job was a great man. Job was a man that feared God, the Bible said in Job chapter 1. But Job had a problem. People say, why will God blame Job? Because it was Satan that sent Job. No, Job created the opening that made Satan to come on that assignment. Praise the Lord. No matter how big you are in faith, the moment you begin to fear, that door will be open for the devil. Fear moves the devil. Faith moves the Spirit of God. Amen? And so you can be strong in faith, but in a moment, in a moment, and that is why avoid faith killers. Avoid fake because they are dangerous. I'm not saying that they are not good people, but they are dangerous. Especially when you are believing God for some things, avoid certain people. Amen. Amen. When you are expecting a certain kind of miracle, avoid certain group of people. Those that will mock you. Those that will despise your faith. Those that will say, ridicule you. Avoid them. I kept a distance from my family for many years because they didn't understand me and I didn't understand them. They were all Christians and religious people, but they didn't understand me. And I didn't understand them. I didn't understand why they would not understand me. Praise the Lord. So for years, I separated myself from them. I'm telling you the truth. It was over 10 years I stayed away from them. I stayed away. You know why? Because I was going somewhere. I was going somewhere. And when they began to hear what God is doing in my life, they began to reconnect. Do you know what I just said? The Bible said the fame of Jesus went abroad. Many of you, you are seeking for people recognition. You are looking for the affirmation of your people, your parents, your brothers, your sisters. Let them go. They ridiculed Jesus also. His brothers ridiculed him. His people ridiculed him. And many of you, you know, you know, Pastor, I cannot do without my mom. Do without her. Do without her. Amen. Amen. Do you understand this morning what I'm talking about? Place your faith in the living God. If you look at the scripture we read in Mark chapter 11 verse 23, 
the word says, 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 in one verse was in three places. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. If you will say, and not doubt. If you will say, and not doubt. Wherever the mountain is, you can move it. You can move any mountain. And so, in that scripture alone, anything is possible in your life. You can recreate destiny. You can recreate conditions. You can recreate a marriage. You can recreate your children. What does it take? What does it take? No, what does it take? Very often, working in love is what it takes. Very often. I don't see people that work in love being losers. Are you hearing me? There are things that triggers the power of God into your life. Working in love. Working in love. Working in love can change anything. How many of you have heard about the man called Smith Wigglesworth? Smith Wigglesworth. None of you here. Smith Wigglesworth. Ah. Praise the Lord. Smith Wigglesworth was a great English evangelist. He died many years ago. The wife was a Christian. But he will embarrass the wife. He will do so many things against the wife. And the wife did not raise it as a prayer point in the church. In one particular incident, the wife went for a church meeting. Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth. By the time the wife came back, he had locked the door. He said, go and sleep in that church. And in the cold winter night, Smith Wigglesworth's wife, she sat by the door. She sat by the door. Because her husband wouldn't open the door for her to come in. Because she went for a church program. Many of you will begin to bind and curse him. You are too quick to curse. You are too quick to condemn. You are too quick to judge. And yet, you are a carrier of life. The word of life is in your mouth. And then, the woman was shivering cold. She stayed there, but the Holy Ghost comforted her. In the morning, Smith Wigglesworth opened the door, and she fell inside. And quickly got up. He said, my Lord, good morning. Your breakfast will be ready in a few minutes. She rushed into the kitchen. I made breakfast for the man that locked her out all night. If it is you, what will you do? No, women of New Testament, if it is you, what will you do? Hello? What will you do? My God will judge you. This God I said will show you. <clears throat> he said, you are my God. <laughs> my God will hit you, will jam you. Hello? She went. I made breakfast for Smith Wigglesworth. Set it on the table. I said, my Lord, your breakfast is ready. Please come and eat. And she quickly went up to go and uh, change and brush. Are you hearing me? Why the man was on the dining table eating the food? Ah! There is no heart. God cannot change. If a right seed is sowed for it. If the right seed if the right seed, as the heaven remains, as the heaven remains, seed and harvest time shall not cease. If you sow a seed and you wait for the time, there will be a harvest. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And so, instead of Smith Wigglesworth, wife, to rain curses and condemnation and call the pastor and complain, what did she do? She carried it. That is why somebody like uh, what's it called? Wachuku? Osinachi? The late Osinachi? I respect that woman's spirit greatly. I respect her spirit greatly. When you hear what she went through and she had all the connections and, her, and she didn't tell anybody. She had the platform to announce to the world what she was going to pray for me. My husband is maltreating me. Pray for me. And I'm just saying, listen, even though personally in this church, by the grace of God, if I know you that you are going through such things in the marriage, I will advise you from the word of God to come out. You, are you hearing me? 
The church has such power. Any marriage that will take your life, the church has the power to annul it. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. You know, you know we, we've been wrongly taught. We've been wrongly taught. You mean that God, because you made a mistake, enter into a marriage and you are tortured, you are beaten, you say God hates divorce. You are reading the Bible upside down. You are reading the Bible upside down. And your husband say, it is written, wives, like eternity so near. Wives, obey your husband. You must submit to me. Submit to who? Hitler. If I get to know about it, I will come to take you out of it. If you refuse, you are on your own. Praise the Lord. The church can say that this is not a marriage anymore. You have made a mistake to enter. We, as the body of Christ, we have authority. Jesus said, whatever we bind here, we bound in heaven. Whatever we lose here, we say now. We, after you were joined together in the church. And so from the same church, we have the power to annul it. We have the power to cancel it. Make no mistake about it. Because the man who says that God hates divorce, and the man, you, you become the hostage. And the man becomes Osama Bin Laden. Thank you. Or oh, Mike Tyson. Punch you up and down. And then you say, God hates divorce. God hates divorce. Praise the Lord. Anybody that we wed in this church during your counseling and before you come to the altar you will take a covenant here that you will be what Christ said you should be in marriage. Are you hearing me? And if you fail to do so the marriage will also be annulled on the altar. Are you hearing me? The church has been so powerless for so long. I said, anyone that will betray the oath will not see good. Do you agree to stay married? Do you agree to stay married? He said, Pastor, let me go and think about it. Go and think and come back. Praise the Lord. I just your tie very well, Jafaru. Praise the Lord. I just your tie very well. Are you hearing? Even when you want to marry, it will happen to you. Praise the Lord. When I said that he was adjusting his tie as if is it going to be like that? It is going to be like that. Remember, revelation is progressive in the body of Christ. Nobody knows it all. What the church didn't know 10 years ago, by revelation we have gotten better. What we didn't know 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 4 years, 40 years ago, when the church was preaching that as part as a church rat, that was ignorance. Amen? Amen. No! No! Even church right now are living well off. They are comfortable, praise the Lord. And if the church right is comfortable, how much more church members? Praise the Lord. If the church right is comfortable, shouldn't you be much more comfortable than church right? I pray you will catch this revelation. And so, you can change a bad marriage. You can change your bad business prospect. You can change hopelessness. You can change any of this thing. And it does not take 10 hours paying a fasting. It does not take one week paying a It takes the spirit to change it. The day you make up your mind, I'm not going to suffer again here. That's the day your suffering will end. That's the day. I made up my mind long time ago I would not be a poor man. I made up a long, long time ago. I said I will not be a poor man. I made that because I don't like poverty. Amen? Amen. I don't like what? Poverty. How can you help people when you are poor? No, how can you help others when you are poor? No, the poor cannot help the poor. 
Praise the Lord. Somebody comes in the midst of poor people and takes somebody out and said, I'm going to transform you so that you can go back and change others. That's the ministry of the Spirit. Amen. That's the ministry of the Spirit. Job said, The things I fear, I greatly dread, has come upon me. Stop fearing. No, stop fearing. And that's why when you hear people talking bad about Nigeria, talking bad about the government, stay away from such people. Don't contribute. Don't even listen. Because faith comes by hearing. There are people that are agents of darkness. Not that they are bad people. Though, but what they will tell you will destroy your faith. By the time they have gone, they will release enough poison into your system. And you are wondering, before this person came, I was okay. Now the guy has gone, I can't even pray. You got up to pray, you were doing mum, 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 mum. You say, what has happened to me? There are companies you must avoid at all costs when you want to move forward, when you want to make progress. There are companies you must avoid. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you talk against anybody, I will avoid you. Because you are a pit. You are already in the pit. You want to draw somebody into your pit. Amen. Amen. Why don't you get up in the morning and say, Lord, ah, you have made me in your image and in your likeness. My condition today, how does it reflect you? Papa, how does my condition reflect you? I've been lying on one mattress for one week. Sorry, not one mattress, one bed sheet. For one month. It has not been washed because you don't have another one. It was a bit whitish before. Without color, it has changed to brown. And people think that you bought it brown. You are the one that said them, this thing used to be very white. Too. You, say, ah? you mean? You mean? What happened now? I'm telling you the way to change your situation. You bought a t-shirt. It used to fit you with a neck like this. Bam, go. Now you have one that when you wear the t-shirt, it's twice the next size. This side is going east, this side is going west. You pull it together to get to maintain stability. And you say all is well. And you say all is well. Now I'm telling you signs of poverty. So that you'll be angry today. Not with me. With the situation. Praise the Lord. Israel said, Ah. Oh, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we are cast out. Israel said, Ezekiel 37. He said, now we are all cast out. And God said, so it is with them. You get what you say with God. You get what you say with me. Even though Israel is supposed to be God's nation. But when they spoke wrongly, they became a poor nation. They lost everything. You, you, you. I want to provoke you this morning. I want to make you angry this morning with the devil. Demand the change of your situation. I taught a message some months ago, I think last year. And that message was, whose inscription do you carry? The mark. Paul said, I bear on my body the mark of Christ. I ask you, whose inscription are you wearing? You are conditioned. Who does it reflect? No. Who does your condition reflect? Does it reflect Christ? Does it reflect Christ? Or does it reflect Nigeria? Why should you be like a nation? No. Why should you be like a nation? You are not a Nigerian. You are not a German. You are not an American. You are not a British. Why should you be like a nation? We are called to be like our God. We are not made like our nation. We are not made like our continent. We are made to be and live and manifest like Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What do you want? No, what do you want? You hear this word every day. Every day. You go back. We are, the year is ending next month. We are barely five weeks away from the end of this year. And yet, that's big enough for God to make a change in your life. Five weeks is more than enough. Next week, I believe, we have prayer and fasting for three days. 
next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we have prayer and fasting. And we said it well in advance so that you can prepare for it. And you know what? Those that need it most will not show up. Those that need it most. We have prayer and fasting. If you want to change your situation, you make up your mind. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, from morning to night, you will dwell in the house of God until he changes your position. Lord, if you don't change me, I'm not leaving you. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I will stay upon Mount Zion. I demand a change in my life. Lord, it's not too late for you to do a miracle in my life. The Bible said that Jacob was alone. Everybody was gone. Jacob was alone. The Bible said the man came to him by night. And the man began to wrestle with him. And Jacob said, I don't know who you are, but I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go. I've been on the run all my life. This time around, you will solve my problem. I will wrestle until you hear me. And the Bible says, the man said, what is your name? He said, Jacob is my name. Swindler. 419 is my name. He said, okay. Okay. I will give you a new name. He said, you will no longer be a 419. You will no longer be on the run. I will give you the name Israel. I will give you the name a prince. He said, I have come to change you. Because you refuse to let go without being changed. Praise the Lord. The people that want to leave service early are those that need miracle most. They leave. Where are they going? They want to go and watch football. The girl, they want to go and be with their friends. You are in a hurry. And you are forgetting that the more of the world that soaks into you, the more it destabilizes all the things that destabilizes you. The word of God, as it comes into you, it begins to make a change. I showed you here some months ago the difference between being soaked in water and being sprinkled with water. You remember? I showed you. For you to be sprinkled with water will take a long time before you get soaked. In some cases, you may never be soaked. But you can jump into the water. Jump as it, as it is with you. And everything in you will be drenched. Everything in you. In one jump, in one action, you can transform yourself. You know what Esther said? Esther said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going. Praise the Lord. She said, if I perish, I perish. By the way, poverty will kill anyway if you don't kill poverty. And so Esther said, I will go before the king, a type of Jesus, a type of Jesus, and said, if I perish, I perish. Shout hallelujah. Anybody that will say, Lord, if I perish, I perish. I want a change. You will get a change. Even before the end of this month, before the end of this year, you will get a change. You will see a change. Let me ask you, how long does it take a big man to change your situation? If he wants to give you money, how much work does he need to do? A big man that wants to, let's say, let's say that God will give you 10 million naira. How long will it take him to do it for you? If he wants to do it, how long? No, how long? Like this, isn't it? And God is much more. That God is a small boy. Do you understand what I'm saying? You may call on that God, he will not hear you, but if you call upon God, he will hear you. That's the difference. He said, if you search for me, if you will search for me with all your heart, you will find me. You will find me if you will seek me with all, all your heart. Not part of your heart. But with all your heart. Job said, the things I greatly feared. Some of you are afraid of poverty. Your grandmother was poor. Your mother was poor. You, you, you know, you say you know also the thing runs in the family. Uh, your mother died of cancer. 
the first one, the next person, grandmother died of cancer, the great grandmother died of cancer, the other person, and now the doctor say it looks like cancer. You say, ah, I know it. You see your life? You see your life? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? For a Christian, never go to a doctor if you are not ready for what they will tell you. No, do you hear what I just said? Before you go to the doctor, be ready what they will tell you. Be ready. Because they will tell you things. It is their business to tell you things. Some will go to a pastor and see, go to a doctor. They say they will choose. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you want a change? Fear is a killer. Fear. There is a saying that says, cowards die many times before they are dead. Did you get what I just said? It's a saying, cowards die many times before they are dead. It's like two soldiers on the war front, fighting and defending. Two friends, they were fighting together, and they shot the friend. They shot the friend, the friend got wounded. By the time they came together, they found that the other friend is dead. They didn't shoot him. Are you hearing me? Listen, they shot the friend near him. Not him. When the paramedics came to carry the, the friend that was shot that is still alive, he said to them, that's my friend, please wake him up. They wake him, wake him, wake him, wake him. They say he's gone. He said, what? But I'm the one that was shot. The fear. The fear. That is what fear can do. Praise the Lord. This morning, this morning, change. Change your heart. Do away with the fear. Praise the Lord. It is fear that arms the sickness and disease to kill. Not the sickness. Every sickness is powerless in the life of a believer. Did you hear what I said? Every sickness, every disease is powerless until when you will hear that it has been killing people. Hello? You hear it has been killing people. And then your faith will just quickly go away. Don't walk in fear. Walk in faith. We are called to a living hope. Amen. Amen. Remember. Remember. Without faith, you cannot please God. Without faith. I see a lot of young people and this is what I don't understand. This is what I don't understand. And I'm still trying to understand it. And maybe I will never understand it. A young person, you are so talented, you are so gifted. You did 419 and defrauded somebody. It's not an easy work. It's not an easy work. You put everything into it and you succeeded to defraud somebody. Why don't you turn that faith around? Put it in God. You run your generator. You run your computer. You run your phone 24 by 7 to defraud somebody. Why don't you run those things at the same time for the gospel and see what God will do for you? When it comes to read the Bible, you don't have power. When it comes to study the word of God, your battery is low. When it's 419, you will fill the generator. You will put the data. Are you hearing me? Pray all night you can't. For 419, you will stay away from 11, p 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. What business are you? No, what business are you? Are you even a Christian? Or the computer said, Lord, let him answer. In your prayer, 
You are saying that somebody you are defrauding should answer, Lord, let him, Lord, Lord, Lord. This God is merciful. Praise the Lord. In your fraud, you are praying. I have told you, young people, you can make a deal with God. You can make a deal with God. Who wants to take that challenge? Who wants to make a deal with God? God bless you. Stand on your feet. Who wants to make a deal with God? I have shown you the path of progress. The question is, who wants to make it? Who wants to make such deal with God? You see, this is where you don't see the young people answering. Who wants to make the deal with God? You like to struggle, and you've been struggling. Who? My question this morning, who wants to do business with God? Because at the end of the day, no, no, I'm not asking for multitude, though. For those that are serious, those that are serious, amen. When I was just about nine, ten years, nine, ten years in Assemblies of God, 222 Clifford Road in Aba, I saw Dr. Mark by. He came to have a crusade in that church. I looked at that man, he was wearing white up and down, and he said that was his first crusade since he graduated from U.S. I looked at him. I was just nine, ten years. And I said, Lord, I want to be like that man. I didn't have father. I didn't have mother to guide me. But I saw a guide in him. I said, Lord, I want to be like this man. And then I went on to pray. I said, Lord, if you will send me abroad to go and study. If you will send me abroad, Lord, I will serve you. I was not to go abroad. I was not supposed to go. The circumstances and situations were contrary to me. But because of that vow, I said, Lord, if you will send me, I will serve you. Contrary to all contrariness. Are you hearing me? I was picked to go. I was picked to go. When I say contrary to all contrariness, when I left secondary school, 1982, I gave somebody money, working for my uncle in Lagos here. Yeah. I made some money because I wanted to travel. I gave the money to somebody, an uncle in the family. I said, hold this money for me. I want to use it and do international passport. My own uncle chopped the money. Uh, he came from US actually. He was the first to be sent abroad from the family. So I trusted he would understand. And I gave him that money. I said, please, this is for my international passport. Hold it for me. I don't want to chop it. If I had known, I would have chopped it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When I went to collect the money, he told me he had spent it. I should give him time. I didn't have time. I have to save up another money. When I saved another money, I went now and gave that money to our head of security then. And my uncle called Gold. That was his name. I can't forget that name. I said, go, keep this money for me. He kept it. When I needed it, I told him what I, he was the one that even helped me. And I went to Marina. I paid for my passport, international passport. Nobody knew. Your foundation can only be dug by you. You keep chopping what comes into your hand. And you say you are believing God. You are not serious. The day the opportunity came, Listen, the new opportunity came. My uncle called me into his office, big office. He said um, that they've get, gotten admission for me in UK. That if I have passport, that I would have traveled. That since I don't have passport, that sorry, there's nothing he can do. If you want to send somebody abroad, won't you get passport for the person? If you truly want to do it, won't you get passport for the person? When the children travel, he got passport for them. But for me, I was told, sorry, you don't have it. I said, sir, I have passport. He said, no, no, I, do, I don't know. He's not talking about photograph. He didn't think I would understand. I said, sir, I have passport. He said that I should go, that he's not talking about picture, that I don't know what he's talking about. I said, sir, I have international passport. He said, what is that? I said, I have it. I can't forget. 
He said, our factory was in a Itire garage near a solo, right? He said to me, we live in, a, we are living in Surulere. We are living in Ajoke Street, number three Ajoke Street, right? Very close to Aguda area. He said to me, I should go to the house and bring that passport. Let him see because he didn't believe me. Are you hearing me? He said, I should go home. I came down from downstairs to where two story building, where his office. I came down. I was going through the gate. My uncle came down into his car. He was going to the same house for lunch. LA7139 WC was the number of the vehicle. 504. Are you hearing me? As I was walking past the gate, my uncle drove past me. I was going to the house. He was going to the house. I'm not fit to be in the same vehicle with him. Are you hearing me? I got to the, listen, I got to the house. By the time I picked the passport, he just finished eating. He drove out again, he passed me. And I trekked back to the same office. And I climbed up to the same office, my own uncle. Are you hearing me? My mother's immediate junior brother. I brought the passport. I said, sir, I have it. He opened it, he looked, looked at it. He said, okay, 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 okay. He said, yeah, I should call his general manager. He called the general manager. He said, you should take me to the British embassy and then uh, whatever they say. That was all. No preparation. Nothing. And that's where they carried me. Carried me then to the British embassy for interview. What they asked me, I cannot explain. What I answered, I cannot explain. All I know is that they said you should go. I still have that passport I used to travel to go to school. If you want to talk about not having anybody, I've been through that. If you want to talk about being denied, I've been through that. And so, if you are looking for somebody to look up to, I, I'm here. Because I went through it, I can help you. But if you are not serious, how can I help you? No, I'm not talking about somebody else. I'm talking about my own uncle. Praise the Lord. When my visa came out, everybody was shocked. But it was by the finger of God. When I was about to travel, nobody told me how to dress because I was going in winter. I left Nigeria in October 1982 to go to UK to study. Nobody told me the way to dress. I wore a suit. One of my uncle both da dashed me. I don't know me and the coat who was bigger. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I am talking about nobody even to tell me this is the way you should dress. He knew it was winter time I was going. Because he travels almost every month. He left me like that. Praise the Lord. I wore my red stocking. With a suit that is beige in color. Like this color of the carpet. How does it match? It doesn't match now. With one funny shoe. And then I had red ecolac bag. Praise the Lord. True story of your pastor that stands before you today. A colored bag, red. Stocking, red. Shoe, brown. That combination is enough to frighten the devil. Are you hearing me? I so when the devil... <laughs> when the devil left me alone, it was for good reason. I was enough danger to him. Red bag, red stocking. Who are you to stop me from me? I will board you with fire. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's how I made it to UK. That's how I made it to UK. In UK. Ah. When I arrived, it was cold. I said air condition everywhere. I didn't understand it was winter. Because nobody prepared me for it. Are you hearing me? I was to take another flight to Manchester. 
I didn't know. I was just at the airport with my red bag. And then for some reason they said that flight is cancelled, we have to go by. Is it helicopter or something like that? And they were calling my name from the pay pages. I didn't know because nobody told me they would call my name. Who am I for me to be called at the airport? It was one a hostess that came and said, Are you? Are you? Are you? He showed me the card. <laughs> he said, Follow me. We've been calling you. I said, I don't know. Praise the Lord. The journey to greatness does not begin with greatness. It doesn't. It begins with a lot of mockery. People will mock you. People will despise you. PDA, they mocked her. They despise her. They said all kinds of things against PDA. I am a witness. But God didn't mock her. See where God, God has placed her today. Many of you, you are too ashamed to be mocked. Please, let them mock you so that God will honor you. Amen. Let them mock you. That's my uncle that chopped my money. When he had a problem, I was in a position to bless him. I reached out to him. I didn't remind him about it. I just blessed him. I blessed him with such enough cash that the wife has to call me to thank me. That is what the glory of God does. When God blesses you, we won't remember those that mock you. When the brothers of Joseph came to him, what did he say to them? This morning, genuinely, genuinely, if you want to do deal with God, you have had my testimony. I only said, Lord, if you will take me abroad, I will serve you. Many of you, you can make the deal in different ways. Jacob said, Lord, if you will take me on this journey and bring me back, I will give you a tenth of whatever I make. I will give you. And God had it. You know, I didn't have anybody to even relent the way they treated me. Some of you will call somebody to talk to. Some of you will call somebody to complain to. I didn't have anybody in my life to even go to and say, look at the way I've been treated. Nobody. And so whatever you go through, you bear it by yourself. You are by yourself to yourself. And so I don't understand people that say, if I don't say it, if I don't say it, I will have heart attack. You are not matured. You are a nephews. You are a child. And so then, devil will not stress a situation that give you heart attack and you will buy it. Listen, I have come from the hard way. Nothing you do will hit my heart. Don't you get it? No, don't you get it? Nothing you will do will hit this heart. Because I sold it to God at an early age. And it's been there. It's been there. I said it's been there. I sold my heart to God because I had no mother, I had no father, I had nobody else to talk to. And so the only place and the only one I have, I sold my heart to him early. You say because you quarrel with somebody, your heart is pounding. You are a baby. Praise the Lord. One of our daughters in Germany, the other day he called me and she was talking something. I said to her, I said, this one does not even get to me. I'm not hearing you. It doesn't touch my heart. She said to me, Daddy, do you even have a heart? I said, what do you mean? He said, no, I don't think you even have a heart. Because what touch others does not touch you. I said, praise God for that. You know what touches me? When I see people suffering and their situation can change. When I see young people, I know that you can. When I was in Bible school in, in Canada, uh, when I'm going to lesson, when I'm going to class, I will have money for transport. I will decide to trek. You know why? That 45 minutes trek, I use it to pray. And so when I enter class, I am built up. I am strong. I will trek back. But if it's cold, I will join the bus. I had the money then. But I can't pray in the bus. I can't pray in the bus. And so I will walk. I walk. I'm going to Bible school. When people pass you, they will look back. It's another African madness. They don't know it's gospel madness. Praise the Lord. I prayed myself up so well. When I get to the Bible school, I'm hot on the inside. 